Hi, this next video is going to be on monitoring a 3D printer using a couple of open source tools called Prometheus and Grafana. Um, for people who watch my channel, I usually do hardware videos, um, various hardware projects that I do, but I'm actually primarily a computer programmer, so I do a lot of software. I just don't often uh, video the software. Uh, this is one of those cases, since the software is applicable to 3D printing, and I've been doing some 3D printing videos lately. I thought I'd talk about the software a little. Um, so this is my Prusa i3 Mark III printer printing away here. Um, I've also done a review of the printer and some other printer related videos. It does have an OctoPie kind of stash back here and a little orange case plugged in and it's running OctoPrint and is currently printing something. So Prometheus and Grafana are a set of tools for monitoring um, servers and processes and services and such. Um, it's big in the IT community, and I wanted to be able to monitor this printer with Prometheus and Grafana. So what I did is I wrote an OctoPrint plugin running on the uh, OctoPie back here that serves up the proper uh, data for Prometheus to be able to scrape um, OctoPrint to learn things about the print. You know, it's how much it's extruding, um, what its temperatures are, when it, what its state is, that sort of thing. So this is kind of a client-server approach. On the Pi, we're only running uh, the thing that's providing the endpoint, that's providing the data. On a separate Linux machine, I'm actually running the uh, Prometheus and Grafana tools because those probably require a little bit more horsepower both in CPU and in storage capability than we're going to get out of our Pi. And certainly while we're printing, we don't want to be doing uh, computer storage intensive things. So here is OctoPrint, currently running on the Raspberry Pi attached to my 3D printer. Uh, lots of people use OctoPrint and uh, OctoPi. So should all look familiar. Um, I'm actually printing something right now. It's a silica extension. Um, it's just a few percent into it. It's got a couple hours left. Looking over here, we can see, of course, there's my webcam. You know, printer's running. So let's take a look at the plugin itself. So go into settings, plugin manager, about page three or so. Uh, there it is. I've installed my plugin called OctoPrint Prometheus. Um, there's my name, my homepage link. Uh, going down here, we can see it's got some settings. It's got a port number that's exposed, port 8000. Uh, if you change the port number, you're going to have to restart um, OctoPrint for the change to take effect. So if I hadn't already installed the plugin, it's easy. Go into Plugin Manager, hit Get More from a URL, copy the URL out of my README, um, go over here, paste it in, and then select Install. I'm not going to do that because I've already got it installed. So here inside of OctoPrint, there's not much to see from this plugin because it's, what it's doing is it's actually serving up an endpoint that a separate Prometheus server can occasionally scrape and read data from. So if we look, we can actually look at this endpoint. I've got a shell session open. Um, so here we are on my Raspberry Pi. Let's take a look at the data the, the Prometheus plugin is actually serving up. So we could just curl localhost port 8000 because that's the port we told it to use. Curling that, this is all of the data that it will provide to Prometheus. Um, up here from the top, we've got the state of the printer. Is it um, initializing, printing, done, canceled, idle, etc.? So currently 1.0 in printing, so it's printing. It automatically collects a bunch of Python and process statistics, so we know how much memory the OctoPrint process is using when it started its CPU seconds, how many file descriptors it has open. That just came from the Prometheus uh, Python library itself. But now we'll get into some of the custom uh, things that I'm providing. So temperature of the hot end, actual, um, a total filament extruded, um, temperature of the bed, actual, uh, print info about the print. So, you know, the name of the print, um, Z-axis information, um, the last uh, G-code movement, so the speed, the X. Um, here's, these aren't sorted, so we're kind of going through them in random order. You know, how much filament extruded for this print, target temperature on the hot end, um, Z-axis movement, target temperature on the bed, progress of the print, Y-axis movement, extruder movement, serving all this data. So if we go into Prometheus, 
So let's go into the Prometheus UI and take a look at what it can do. Um, this is just a very simple query API for Prometheus. Uh, Prometheus is the time series database, so it comes with this sort of querying API by default. So we can type in any key we want here, you know, and it'll it'll complete for us. So like extrusion, there's all these extrusion ones, extrusion total. Uh, you can see I already executed it once, but I'll execute it again. That's the current value of extrusion. Um, we could do a graph of it. That's uh, extrusion. Uh, what is this over like the last hour or so? Yeah, one hour duration. So it can do these simple sort of uh, graphing capabilities. We could do something else like movement X, execute. Yeah, you can see the X axis is kind of moving around. That's that's not surprising because we're printing stuff. There was a big dead period where I wasn't printing anything. So yeah, all of this, um, you know, back here, there's the current value of uh, movement X. All of this data is in here. Print info. Um, what happens if we do that one? There, that's telling us, you know, what we're printing. This is just access the database, see what's in the database. Um, so it's not the UI that you would really use for anything other than debugging and playing around with it. What you'd really want to use is Grafana. And I'll type in a password. And Grafana, it has multiple dashboards. So I've got two dashboards. Um, one of them is an environmental monitor. This is a separate project that I did. Uh, there's a separate video on this. It's, I built some sensors to monitor the um, temperature and such in my office. Um, and that is what actually led me to the 3D printer monitoring uh, project, is I figured, why not also monitor the printer? If you're interested, you can watch that video about the environmental monitor and see how I collected all of these uh, sensor readings. But what we really want, we want to go back here and look at the 3D printer dashboard. Um, there's always a time range with Grafana, so we're looking at the last three hours. We're refreshing every 10 seconds. I could go down, I could look at the last five minutes. Um, and then in 10 seconds, we should see a refresh. There it was. There was a refresh. You know, we've extruded a little bit more filament. But let's go back to um, three hours. So let's take a look at some of these graphs I've set up. The first one is filament usage over time. This is total filament usage, and I've got it plotting 30 days worth and one year's worth. The 30 day and the and the one year lines are on top of one another because I haven't actually um, had this plugin developed for 30 days. It's only been developed for about two days. Um, we've got this temperature plot. So here's a bunch of temperatures. Um, this was my previous print. Um, after the previous print, you know, it all cooled down and then it all heated back up for the current print. Um, extrusion per print. So again, here's the previous print. It stopped and then it started extruding for the current print. Progress, you know, that counts from zero up to 100. And this also has the file names in it. So you can see as I'm moving around, it shows what file name. I've actually printed this uh, silica extrusion twice. So the previous print was also a silica extrusion. Then here, um, we stopped for a while. Then we started up with another silica extrusion. Um, and we're currently, you know, 7% into that. So movement is showing the z-axis and the extruder axis. I could also plot x and y. Uh, the movement graph is not all that interesting. I mean, I suppose the z-values are kind of interesting. Um, you know, you can see here are the z-values for the previous print, then the current print is starting up again. These big negative spikes, um, I'd have to look into those. Maybe those are retractions, or maybe they were just zeros that didn't mean anything you know it's, it's not like the print head went all the way back down to the bed in the middle of the print so it's you need to do a little bit more looking into and then of course this was at the end of that first print you know it it went up to its idle height and sat there until i started the next print um the nice thing about grafana is we can dynamically change these ranges so like last 12 hours um well, there's not a whole lot there let's go last 24 hours so the current print, you know, it's way over here. It's about 8% in. Here's the previous silica extrusion. Over here, this is a, uh, which print is this? This was a T-Rex uh, Play-Doh cutout that I printed. So we could just zoom in on that. And now we're looking at this T-Rex that printed. You know, we could see its temperatures. 
its progress, its uh, z-axis movement, filament extruded, you know, the, the total extrusion on the printer. Um, we can zoom back out. And here are the prints that preceded that T-Rex. These were very short prints that I was doing just to try out um, the plug-in as I was developing it. And these are a bunch of washers. So if we go down here, we can see this was an M3 6.2 millimeter washer that I printed. And I printed the same thing here and the same thing there. Um, so we can see for the washer, you know, here's his temperature profile. You know, the filament usage steps up for each washer. Um, each washer extrudes a certain amount of filament. You know, we can zoom in on just a particular washer. Um, you see the temperature close up. Go back to 24 hours. And, you know, occasionally you'll see something interesting. Like here, this was my, I think this was my T-Rex print. Zoom in on that one. Zoom in right here. You know, look at those weird drops in uh, hot end temperature. I wonder why it dropped down to 240 there. Uh, that's something to look into on the printer because that's that seems like a an unusual drop. So I think as a diagnostic tool, this will be kind of handy. You know, I can go back over over just about any print that I've done. Um, this uh, Prometheus Griffon are going to keep collecting this data, and you know, I can look if if there's an anomaly in a print, I can look back here and see what happened. Um, it's also going to be useful for um, calculating this filament usage. You know, I'd like to know how much filament have I used this month, how much have I used this year. I think we could probably um, histogram this in some way so that we could get like filament usage per month. Lots of different things can be done with Grafana with all this querying capability. You know, just for example, to edit a graph. So here you see the metric set up for this uh, filament usage graph. You can see I've done some summing over time of it to get the total uh, filament usage. I've done the one year, the 30 day. You can add more queries. So I could add a seven day, I could add a one day. You know, if I go up in here to add a new graph, I can create um, tables, heat maps. Uh, uh, once I collect more data, I'll probably play around and create some more graphs. Anyhow, that's, that's a basic intro to uh, Prometheus and Grafana, um, graphing the um, utilization of a 3D printer. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sandrail stuff. Bye.